Hey guys, Madison here. The reaction you're about to see was filmed back in 2021 during a time when I was not uploading videos to YouTube. Long story. But due to popular demand, I've decided to start uploading those reactions here on YouTube in special From the Vault Fridays. I hope you enjoy. Hey guys, Madison here, and today I'm going to be watching Open Range. I'm so excited to watch this movie. You guys know I love Kevin Costner, and it's been a while actually since I've done a Western movie reaction. I think the last one I did was Dances with Wolves, so I've only done one so far, <laughs> another Kevin Costner movie. But as you guys know, those of you who are patrons and saw the poll this week, I was like, I just want to do a Western theme this week. I haven't reacted to a Western in a couple of months or so, so I really wanted to watch another one because you guys know Westerns are my favorite. <laughs> so I am so excited to watch this movie. I can't wait. So let's jump right in and let's watch Open Range. Oh. Beautiful landscape. I love it. Never gets old. I love how their names were perfectly timed with them appearing. Diego Luna. What? <laughs> I didn't know he was in this. He's gonna be so young in this movie. Oh, puppy. Not good. Oh, that's him. That's Diego right there, isn't it? Uh-oh, the cattle might stampede. I can feel it. The cattle are gonna stampede, aren't they? You ever seen one this bad? Lots of snow in the flood. No. Or I wonder if whoever the bad guy is like stole their cattle and they don't even know. <laughs> You're gonna play them cards moles or stare a hole through them. Don't rush me. That's me with my brother. I'm just like play already. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> pity sick. I can't get over how young Diego is in this movie. Right. That's it. I'm out. Me too. Man's trust is a valuable thing, but you don't want to lose it for a handful of cards. Well, at least it ain't raining. Hard work, man. Looks like you could use a little muscle there, Charlie. Every man's got to pull his weight button. Yeah, but my weight is half of yours. <laughs> it's Charlie there that talked him into it, and I ain't one to take a man's confidence lightly. You know I ain't either. I know you ain't, but it's best to keep remembering it. There they are. Oh, hold on! <laughs> that would suck, man. Old boss sure can cowboy, can he? Yeah. Broke the mold after him. I keep waiting for something bad to happen. I just know it's a matter of time. <laughs> it's like when things go well for too long, I just keep getting more nervous because I'm like... <laughs> Cows are funny creatures, that's for sure. I got it. If you're gonna pick your feet like a monkey, you do it downwind. <laughs> You'd have to clean up some. Otherwise, no one could stand a stick. That was mean, but also kind of funny. <laughs> What'd you do that for? <laughs> Cheating at cards. Ooh. Okay, so he deserved it. <laughs> I apologize to him for that. Evidently, he ain't over it yet. What if he's lying out there just waiting for us to come along? We never find him at night anyway, but now come on down from there. He's worried. Something happened to him, didn't it? You worried? Yeah, I'm worried. Been worried since yesterday. Should have sent me. You and me strike out early. Button can watch the outfit. Button, come on down from there and alone. Get supper working. I don't know if you should leave that kid alone anywhere. <laughs> we haven't seen a single person since we set up the camp. I always feel better about leaving a wagon if someone's close around. Stay right here. Oh, boy. Wants to go. 
She acts like she does, but she don't. <laughs> Still got the heart, not the legs. Oh. Got some pretty mountains. Great set design right there. Very authentic. Yeah, he's up in the jailhouse. He got into it with some with some cattlemen over at the general store. Some cattlemen? Yeah. Moe's don't start fights. Just finishes. I just said he started. You said he didn't. How does uh, $50 each offense sound? <laughs> like robbery. Yeah. <laughs> you know, folks in Fort Harmon country don't take the free grazers or free grazing. They hate them. Free graze is legal. Times change, Mr. Spearman. Most folks change with them. A few holdouts never do. You hitch up your wagon and get your damn free graze cattle moving and keep them moving till you're out of Fort Harmon country. Alrighty then. Open range ain't so open around here. Looks like someone's put the boost to him after he was down. Trash marshal right there. Oh my. Bring him right in. Dr. Barlow. Certainly gave as good as he got. Broke the arm of one. Knowing them, they had it coming, I expect. <laughs> How much owe you, doctor? Or even. I figured I made enough off the damage he did to Baxter's men. We should have made you wealthy. Doc Barlow's got him pretty wide. Noticed that, did you? Well, I ain't dead. Glad to hear it. Creates quite a picture now, don't it? Yeah. Heard they're worth a thousand words. Oh, Where good. Do you suppose he is? I was afraid something was going to happen while they were gone. <laughs> I thought I told you to stay with the wagon. What happened to Moses? Did you hear what I said? Yeah, but what happened? There was three riders scouting up the herd this morning. Where? Maybe half a mile out. Same ones? Four this time. <laughs> and there they go. Cows were getting killed over. The cows is one thing, but one man telling another man where he can go in this country is something else. My danger sense is tingling. One twitch, and you're in hell. Now get on your feet, all of you. How many riders does he have? I said, how many riders? The rest are on their way to your wagon. Now get your britches off. <laughs> Not taking my britches off for nobody. <laughs> if I hear so much as a twig break, I'll come back and kill you all. They're not too late. Oh, he looks like he's alive. They shot the boy, but he's alive. Oh no. He's dead. Shot him in the head. No. Charlie. <sighs> Charlie, get the lantern and the whiskey. Why always the animals? <laughs> all bets are off. Kill them all. <laughs> the animals are never safe in westerns. Never. If you want to come along, fine. We'll go together. Otherwise... 
do what you have to do, I'll do the same. All right. But I aim to kill Baxter and those that done this. I got no problem with killing Boss. Never have. Mm, this is getting interesting. Some moral conflict happening here. That sweet little dog. I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> not again. <sighs> you guys know I'm thinking about Dances with Wolves right now. No spoilers, but you know what I'm thinking about. <laughs> to tell you the truth, Lord, if there was two gentler souls in this world, I'd never seen them. The orders were pretty simple, make trouble wherever we could. With a room like that, it wasn't long before we was killing men who weren't even in uniform. Every once in a while, I almost get through a day without thinking about who I am, what I've done. Oh, I'm loving this. This is good. A man with a dark past. Complicated past. Both of them. Mr. Spearman. Doctor Ian. No, he's not here. We got a boy who's hurt bad. It's not his hearing, ma'am. He hears real well when he's awake. Mr. Spearman, I'm checking to see if there's blood in his ears. It could mean a fractured skull. <laughs> Are you the boy's father? One of Dent Baxter's hands came and fetched him out to the ranch. Some men there had an accident night before last. <laughs> we don't know nothing about that. <laughs> Baxter sent his men to stampede the herd, and I figured me and Charlie would stop him before they could do it. Surprise him where they was hiding in some trees and we had at him. Even if he wakes, he's going to need to stay here a couple of days so we can watch him. Whatever is best for him. Should have built it in another spot. <laughs> oh, that is the epitome of doing something very small and then it just. <laughs> yeah, just wait across there, man. You're a cowboy. Get the dog. It's your dog yet, Charlie. Looks kind of like their dog. There he is. Back here, Charlie. To your left. To your left. Get it. Get it. Aww. You're going into the cafe. I'd be proud to buy you both a cup of coffee. Every once in a while, a good storm washes through and leaves are as clean as a baby's bottom. Gotta look on the bright side, Jims. That's one way to look at it. Uh. You got no quarrel with none of you folks. Baxter's men bushwhacked our friend, shot him dead. Shot a 16 year old boy, too. You don't like free grazers in this town. We don't much like being here. But a man's got a right to protect his property and his life. And we ain't let no rancher or his lawman take either. We don't have to settle this here and now. But I'll be seeing you gents real soon. Ooh. What'd you think of my speech in there? Liked it. <laughs> Maybe I ought to run for mayor. <laughs> Just hold it around the outside. Let me get you something bigger. No, man, we can make two. No. Just. It's nice to be sitting at a table. Who'd have you? Arrange in manger. 
like a rough old dog. <laughs> How about I hold your head underwater for just a little while? <laughs> I married once. Never know that, did you, Charlie? Had a wife and child. They caught the typhus and died, and after that, home didn't seem a place to spend time. That doctor's been gone a, a while, hadn't he? Like three or four days? Strange. I'll take those. The world ain't a perfect place, but but you got unfinished business here. So you come back, you hear me now? What is he doing? Oh, uh, shoot. Oh, Lord. That is so creepy. Suddenly I'm back in a horror movie. <laughs> Wake up. Mr. Wade. Look at my face. That's some like PTSD, scary dream stuff kind of going on, or did she put laudanum in the tea? Surely she wouldn't. She seems like a really nice person, but they showed chloroform and laudanum, and I'm like, why? Like, why did they show that? Unless it comes into play somehow. I don't know. <laughs> Trust no one. <laughs> Your wits about you now. Surely he wouldn't have done that. Spearman wouldn't have done that. It wouldn't make any sense. As bad as it looks. Good grief, that street is flooded. Oh boy. You see that sign? Around these parts, free grazers is the first. Wow. I serve them myself. You know, I can't do this. <laughs> well, when he gets mad, he gets mad. He doesn't mess around. Well, she makes somebody a fine wife, but she ain't the docs. I knew it. That's his sister. I didn't know she was his sister, but I thought they either weren't married or weren't a happily married couple. <laughs> She was being way too free with her making eyes at Charlie. <laughs> well, you may not know this, but there's uh, things that gnaw on a man worse than dying. Marshall's got men waiting to waylay you back at delivery. Another one's in your wagon, and then there's another in the shed across from it. Love that guy. That's what he gets. What's that? Chloroform. Stole it from the docks. I knew that was gonna come back somehow. Well, looky here. He's asleep. No. Looky here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Seems to be enjoying himself a little too much with the chloroform. What no call to leave me setting out like that? You're starting to enjoy that part, aren't you? That's what I said. <laughs> Just casually leaves the door open, huh? <laughs> with two strange men in the house. Literally sweeping it under the rug. <laughs> We're just gonna pretend that. What am I happen. saying, ma'am? You look tired. That's never Shit. the right thing to say, but. <laughs> I thought you was married, Sue. I'm not, Charlie. 
Well, that's good. I mean, that's good to know. Otherwise, we, otherwise, we've been thinking wrong. We wouldn't want to do that. No, no, of course not. <laughs> He's so awkward. I love it. <laughs> Take care of yourself, Charlie. I'm rooting for it. I'm rooting for it. <laughs> Well, what do you want me to tell her, boss? We probably ain't gonna make it. I wish I'd have said more to my wife before she passed. The way you looked after that boy and the respect you give boss. They might be little bets, but they're enough for a woman who looks. If I don't ever see you again, that I meant everything I said to you. Ain't nothing that happened in this old town been a surprise, except for you. That was very sweet. I love that. Old town knows there's a fight coming. I just hope it don't spill over to them. <laughs> They're like, evacuate. Well, um, oh, I got just a thing. He's going to replace her china, isn't he? That's a lot of men. I hope some of the townspeople actually help him. Or maybe even a button will get a shot in at the end. Oh, look who's back. Thinking about if I die, please sell my good horse and my good saddle and my guns to buy a tea set for Charlie. Postscript. I like this one, but I don't know. Okay, now I'm gonna cry. <laughs> oh, hell. Haley. Come away from there. Charles Travis Postlewaite. What's yours? It's Blue Bonnet. Blue Bonnet? Blue Bonnet, yeah. Well, don't you tell no one. <laughs> I wanna hear you swear an oath. Now go on. You should have run when you had the chance, Spearman. Not much for running from cowards. You the one killed our friend? That's right. I shot the boy, too, and I enjoyed it. <laughs> wow. Hiding like a coward. Oh. It's locked. <laughs> you hit? I'm good. Uh. You. You pull that trigger, Baxter, and you can forget about me patching you up. I hope they don't kill that guy like him. The old blacksmith. Whoa. Don't run outside. Where is she going? You said we was going to kill them all. I aim to do just that. Step aside. Listen to him, son. You done what you had to here because they give you no choice. Oh, Lord. It's making a good shot. Come walking down the street or I shoot them. Uh, great. So stop! Stop it! Stop 
it right now. Let the woman and boy go. They ain't a part of this. Well, you want considerations? You drop them guns on the ground. You let her take him to the docks. When I finish with that, I torture homes and drive your wives and children out into the cold prairie. Not if your daddy won't. <laughs> him first. The gun hand. Come and take it, bro. <laughs> Oh. I'm gonna kill you, Baxter! Well, Trevor! It's your Trevor! He's gonna die trying to go in there, isn't he? And for what? More cows? Killed a good man. And maybe that boy out there out yonder. You're not. Mm. Yeah, maybe so. But I'll still be breathing in another minute. Well, I thought he got shot like Baxter. Whew. Man, I was convinced he was gonna die. I was like, no. <laughs> oh, did he get hit in the hand? Was he hit in the hand earlier? Or, cause I thought he got shot near the beginning of the fight. Town justice right there. Ben survived. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> Truth is, there wouldn't be a corner here that don't have a bad memory for me. Go with him. Everything they think they are or did takes hold so hard that it won't let them see what they can be. They've got a big idea about us, Charlie. I'm gonna wait forever, but I am gonna wait. That spearman sting. Gonna run that saloon there. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I'm in love with you, Sue. Been that way since I first laid eyes on you. But riding away thinking I was never gonna see you again was maybe the... It's maybe the most awful feeling I ever had in my life. I know I can be a good husband to you. And I know I ain't asked you properly. But <laughs> I'm asking you now. <laughs> Will you marry me, Sue? Yes. I'll marry you. And can I kiss you? Oh. <laughs> oh, guys. That is so sweet. I cannot. Just forgot to tell you I have word about the saloon by the time you get back. Sounds good. You take care now. Told you I was wanting out of the cattle business. Funny thing, there's a saloon right back there. It just had its owner die. <laughs> yeah. Hope you'll be my partner. I told you I'm gonna give you a thousand things before I'm done. I'm gonna make sure you do. Let's go get our cows. Oh, that was such a happy ending. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Oh, goodness. Oh, wait, something's popping up. Is there like a credit scene? Did he buy that for her? Okay, first off, I just want to say I, what I love about Kevin Costner movies is that he does not shy away from the grittiness of westerns. Not at all. He always portrays the hardness of the life, the difficulty of that life, and 
the blood and the sweat and tears and all of that. But he also is such a romantic in his films. I love it. Like Dances with Wolves, this one, he does not shy away from romance in his westerns. He just has the most genuine, sweet, but also passionate romances. I love them. <laughs> They're so well done every time. And he does such a well developed. Now granted, I know he was the director on this. I don't I didn't see who the writers were, so I don't want to give Kevin all the credit. But the characters are always so well thought out and developed and their motivations are clear and they're they're empathetic and they're likable. I really liked the character of Charlie. Um and Spearman too and Sue. All of them were good, but Charlie in particular was my favorite. Um I just some themes that are that can be so well explored particularly in westerns are like people who have done bad things over the course of their lives and they've done things they're you know ashamed of um but it's like amplified because of course we all you know make mistakes we all mess up and all that but in westerns you can really take that up a notch in terms of stakes like I've killed a lot of people you know or I've killed people I shouldn't have and I've done you know, I fought in this war and um, I was a cowboy and, you know, there's just so many different ways you can explore the um, the tortured soul, the tortured spirit in such a quiet way in these films, too, because they're just, they, they wander these big open spaces in the, this wilderness and they have all this time to think and ponder, you know, what do I want to do with my life? Do I just want to wander do I ever want to, can I ever settle down, you know, and just be in one place? Um, and that's something that obviously, like, the haunted characters, the, uh, even like the soldiers and the wars and all that can be explored in other genres because wars have always happened and wars will always happen. But there's just something unique about the way, oh, it's based on a novel. I did not know this. Okay, so there I am giving uh, Kevin the credit, and I just saw it's based on a novel. So also like Dances with Wolves written by someone and then adapted into a film. That's very interesting. I did not realize that. But uh, anyway, I'm just rambling on and on. What I was going to say is that there's just something unique about the Western genre, and that's why I love it so much. Um, because, you know, themes of hope and love and revenge and redemption and all of that, of course, can be explored in every genre. But there's just something that's so endearing to me and compelling about it, the way it's explored in Westerns. Um, there's just something so genuine and heartfelt about it. And I don't know, I'm, just, I'm captivated by the era. You guys know this. I'm writing a Western novel right now, so... <laughs> I just find that era so captivating. Um, but moving on to like the, the cattle barons and all of that, that was a major issue that was going on later on in the 1800s where these cattle barons, you know, was like, they staked out their land and they're like, this is mine and any people passing through cannot graze their cattle here. My small time neighbors cannot graze here. They can't cross the line, all of that. Um, and people were killed over it brutally and you know I'm with I'm with Charlie and Spearman and them I I think it was probably better back when you could just there was an open range you know the land it, it's a fine line because private property is a crucial um tenant whatever you want to call it everyone should have their own you know private land private property obviously but it's like, what do you do about the people who start taking up so much land, way more land than they could ever need, um, and they're taking that away from other people who are just trying to make their way, just trying to make a living and trying to survive, you know, and they're, um, and when they're taking up all of this country, too, of like, should we allow all of the land to be bought up, you know? what happens when there's no more land to buy and it's all owned by someone and there's no free land anymore. That's something I think about a lot. Um, 
there's there's a big issue going on right now with the wild mustangs out in Wyoming, uh, where these cattle ranchers are buying up all the land. They're still continuing to buy up land, and they are basically eradicating wild horses. And it's an issue that means a lot to me because I love horses. I have two horses. Um, I have a, a friend who owns a wild Mustang. Actually, she just got her in the past year or so from Wyoming because the, these roundups are still happening. They're rounding up these wild Mustangs, separating families of horses, killing horses. I mean, all kinds of terrible things are happening. And that really breaks my heart because I think there should always be wild horses roaming the, the wilderness of America. And if the, we ever get to a day when there's none, that's just really going to break my heart. Um, it's kind of, it's what happened to the buffalo already, where there's there were next to no, no buffalo left, and they had to kind of rehabilitate the, the population. It's what happened to the pronghorn antelope that used to be everywhere, and they just, all the hunters kill them off, and they have to try to rehabilitate the population because they get to near extinction. And it's just sad to me that there's always people who feel the need to destroy and consume everything instead of, you know, take what you need, but not more than what you need. Don't let greed consume you and be like, you know, these wild horses, who cares about them? I'm going to buy up all the land because I want to make my cattle herd bigger. And it's just like, why? <laughs> so, I mean, like I said, there's always kind of a gray area with these things, but without a doubt, there is a major greed issue with human beings. There always has been, and there always will be. Um, and I, I'm always going to be on the side of, you know, the, the everyman, the, the individual, instead of the big uh, greedy corporations and people who don't care about other people and who don't care about nature and, you know, taking care of nature and preserving nature. Um, anyway, the... <laughs> The, this film had a lot of relevant themes in it, great characters, very well made. Um, I, I've yet to see a bad Kevin Costner movie. I don't know if it exists, but yeah, I've, I've yet to see a bad one. Um, he's just such a great actor and so likable. Um, and Another thing I was going to say, too, is that I love how in his films, violence isn't glorified. Like, there are cool fight scenes where you're like, oh, that was awesome, the way that was shot and everything, amazing, great storytelling, but it doesn't glorify the violence. I've noticed, like, in this film and in Dances with Wolves, he really takes the time to show the aftermath, like, of battles and, um, you know, how these people get caught up in violent fights and then you see how it impacts, like, the children and the townspeople and all of that and all, you see all this violence and... How it, how it traumatizes people and the destruction it brings and it's not glorified because violence shouldn't be glorified. It's not like cool or awesome or whatever. You know, I'm I'm guilty of that. I think probably a lot of us are where in films we're like, oh yeah, that was a cool gunfight or, you know, he shot that dude. That was awesome or whatever because it's fiction so we can enjoy things like that. But it's, I think it's always important to remind people in movies um, and books that, you know, we can write cool fight scenes, sure. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think in the end, the, the message should always be clear of like, you know, violence isn't a good thing. It's not something we should aspire to or try to cause. You know, there are consequences. Yeah, um, you should avoid killing people when you can and, you know, only fight when it's necessary. Um, but yeah, I, I think it was absolutely necessary here. This tyrant Baxter was just gonna, he had, he had this whole town living in fear of him, basically, and his corrupt marshal. Another, you know, valid theme here, corrupt law enforcement, which is absolutely a problem still today, always has been, you know, buying off officials, buying off officers, um, corrupt agencies going after the wrong people. I mean, that's definitely an issue, probably always going to be an issue. Um, yeah, anyway, Charlie and Spearman standing up and inspiring the town to stand up was great to see. That That's just the way it is, you know? It takes one person standing up always to give other people the courage to stand up and do the same. So just a really great film, again, with like a beautiful soundtrack and a beautiful setting and great characters, great script. I absolutely loved it, and I could ramble on about it for a while, as you can tell. <laughs> 
So thank you so much to everyone who voted for it on the poll this week. I really enjoyed this movie. Definitely one I'll have to watch again sometime. So I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Be sure to come back next week for film Friday number 18, I believe it's going to be. I can't believe I've been doing this for 18 weeks. That's crazy. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. See you next week.